today we continue with our multimedia course and this is the course outline last time we did introduction to multimedia and today we will begin and end uh, chapter 2 digital representation of graphics and image we recall the textbooks of this uh, course and we begin our chapter so the chapter outline is as follow we have two big sections graphics image data types and popular file format first we introduce what is stored inside the file how to represent a, an image and then we will uh, get to know more about the file formats we can have one file format that represent different data type so for for example uh, we can have uh, a gif uh, image that can ha that has uh, inside it a gray uh, level 8-bit image or an 8-bit color image we can have also jpeg to represent 8-bit color images etc so we will introduce these two um, sections in the first section we will consider the following topics 1-bit images 8-bit gray level images inside this uh, section or inside under this title we will encounter the order dithering uh, algorithm uh, then we will introduce 24-bit uh, color images and then the 8-bit color images by opposition to the 8-bit gray level images in which we will introduce the lookup table and how to make a lookup table one of the uh, very popular ma methods is the median cut so those are the very interesting topics of that chapter we will discuss today plus when the, uh, with this chapter we will get uh, tutorials to introduce and to understand more using MATLAB each of these uh, topics we explained uh, one remark about the popular uh, JPEG format is that this format will be briefly mentioned in this, at the end of this chapter we will detail the GIF format the GIF file format for the JPEG uh, format we, it will, uh, we will have a dedicated chapter to explain it in detail after the compression algorithms chapter because uh, we need the compression algorithm in, in order to explain the JPEG file format the number of file formats used in multimedia is continuing to be bigger and bigger and we have many file formats look at this table 3.1 in the book it is the Adobe Premiere file formats we have image file formats sound file formats and video file formats if we look at the image file formats we don't find one only file format image we find many BMP JPEG GIF PNG EPS, PICT, PSD, TIFF, TGA, and maybe more. So, how do I choose a good file format to represent my, to store my profile picture? Maybe you will tell me just take JPEG because we are used to, but now we will understand why. Uh, we have to study few of those file formats to develop a sense of how they operate we don't have to study them all we want just to understand what is a file format why they are different we will concentrate in the end of the ch this chapter on the J uh, GIF file format because it is one of the simplest and contains several fundamental features based on which the other file format continue to develop their own uh, uh, their own standards and uh, their own uh, mechanism uh, of course JPEG file format is arguably the most important overall and I already mentioned that it will be detailed in a chapter apart so but first be before discussing these file formats uh, especially those for the image type uh, we will first discuss the features of file formats in general image data types first we introduce the one bit images where each pixel inside these images is stored as a single bit one single bit zero or one and we call this type of images a binary image 
or a one bit monochrome image since it contains no color so we say one color either it exists either no this color is the white consider it either there is a white color either there is no white color so it is black so uh, as an example we show uh, figure 3.1 in the book this figure which is called Lena the girl here is Lena and this image is um, uh, used by multimedia scientists to, to this is a standard image they used by them to illustrate many algorithms so um, we will see this on the MATLAB we will see a monochrome one bit image on MATLAB here let me show you let me load an image from MATLAB and show you a binary image so this is a binary image we see it this is uh, the, the colored image before we generate a binary image so this is uh, the image called trees inside MATLAB and we transform it into a binary image look in the image editor we can choose the theta cursor and point to uh, one value here one pixel we can choose the zoom and zoom to see that this is a binary image there is either black or white color in order to be sure this binary image is called BW I will open the workspace variable D BW look with me it is a variable name called BW the value is it is a matrix with 258 lines 350 columns of type logical what it is the type logical in MATLAB uh, it is uh, the bit one bit sold over one bit let me double click this variable to see it this is uh, variables space it opened we open the variable BW and we again see the dimensions of the image how many bits how many lines how many columns and for each pixel it is represented as a logical type logical is a type that uh, is just like boolean either true or false okay so this is the you can display the image uh, data and as you can see for each pixel it is either the value is 1 either 0 so we use only one bit to represent the data and this is called the one bit image let me show you Lena now Lena in black and white so I will open a Lena figure that is not black and white then I will transform it to black and white in a predefined MATLAB function called m2bw and then I will show it so this is the figure displaying m2bw Lena uh, bw and uh, again we will have in our workspace the Lena that is not logical that is not one bit and the transformed Lena bw that is one bit it is 512 lines times 512 columns where each um, each pixel is represented on a logical value a logical value again we say it is a like boolean so it can take either one either two to make sure so to be sure uh, of the values let us display a pixel given a pixel let us see the pixel inside the eye of Lena let me choose this one data cursor so this pixel is indexed 334265 and its value is 1 let me turn out the black and white the black and white value is in fact uh, value 1 because it is a white pixel 
So we maximized the figure and we chose another in the indexes. Uh, x equal 172, y equal 150, and the index, the value is 0. So here it is, one Elena black W parentheses, 172, comma, 150, and uh, the answer is 0. Again, we could have saw this uh, value by opening the Elena black and W uh, 512 times 512 uh, data, logical data. And we go to 172, line 172, and column 150. And this is our displayed value of 0. I can, from inside MATLAB, put it to 1, for example. And here I repeat my command to ask about this pixel, and it will be, of course, modified. We continue by another type, 8-bit gray level images where each pixel has a gray value between that varies between 0 and 255. All in all are 256, so different values. So instead of needing a single bit, like the logical type we use here, so in Java, we need a single byte, 8 bits. And for example, a dark pixel will be represented by 10. The value 10 is very low, it's very near 0, so it is a dark pixel. And whenever we come near the value 255, which is the white uh, color, the pixel becomes brighter and brighter. Such an image is called a bitmap. It is a two-dimensional array of pixel values that represent the graphic of image. And figure 3.3, which is this one, shows Lena again, but in grayscale and not in black and white. Okay. So this is the figure 3.2 where we can see that the two-dimensional uh, image is represented using eight planes from plane 0 to plane 7 and they are called bit planes, one bit per plane and all of them for one pixel constitute one byte. Image resolution refers to the number of pixels in a digital image. So how many pixels we have? How do we know how many pixels we have? We just multiply the number of rows by the number of columns because they have such a number of pixels. And uh, we consider a fairly high resolution for such an image as, for example, uh, 1,600 uh, width and 1,200 height. This is a standard. And uh, if we saw an image with 640 uh, width and 480 height, this is considered now a low resolution. As an example, we display here two pictures of Lena of different resolution. The first one on the, le uh, on the left, you can see Lena with resolution 128 by 128. We... Um, um, extend it so that it fills this area but in fact it it has so less pixels in reality here we have the same lena girl but the, the picture resolution was way uh, more it was 10 times bigger so we have the real resolution 10 uh, 24 times 10 24 and of course you can see that at a certain level in the left image, you can see that the pixels are replicated to fill the space. We have no more data. We have, especially for the fur on the hat and for the uh, eyes details and for the hair. And this is a zoom in, in order you see the, uh, the high frequency areas like the fur on the hat and the eyes with the uh, 128, 128, you see barely nothing, you see barely no details, even the no, nose uh, hole is uh, disappeared. For the image size, each pixel is usually stored as one as a byte, and a, 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 this byte can have, of course, a value varying between 0 to, 50, to 255. And, uh, for example, a small resolution image, 640 times 480, a grayscale image requires uh, 300 uh, kilobytes. 
and uh, this is the calculation. Now, uh, what about dithering? When an image is printed, the basic strategy of dithering is used. Why? Because printers don't have a grayscale ink. They have one only ink. Yeah, we are talking about black and white printers. So if you are printing a, an image, either the printer shall decide at a certain dot either to put an ink or no. She has no grayscale ink. So when an image is printed, the basic strategy of dithering is used, which traits intensity resolution for special resolution to provide ability to print multi-level images on two level, which is one bit printers. A general idea, dithering is the operation of transforming eight bit grayscale images into one bit grayscale images. But this is not binarization because binarization it um, it doesn't take an, into account the grayscale dithering we want the image to still appear as grayscale but if in fact the reality when you zoom in it is a black and white image so uh, this is an example for us to understand directly what are we talking about the dithering of grayscale images in the Figure A, we can see an 8-bit gray image. It is an 8-bit gray image of Lena. And in figure B, we see the desert version of this image. So this is not a gray image, but you can see it as a gray scale image. But in, in fact, when you zoom in, you can see that this image is 1-bit image and there is only black and white pixels inside. Uh, so dithering is used to calculate the patterns of dots. We know we want to know how to distribute the dots, how to distribute the ink, for example, uh, such that values from zero to fifty-five correspond to patterns that are more and more filled at darker pixels values for printing on a one-bit printer. Okay, so if I have here, for example, the 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 bar, the black bar. I have to uh, put more and more uh, pixels set to black. The main strategy is to replace a pixel value by a larger pattern. So instead of putting one pixel value, for example, uh, of value 100, uh, this is a value in the interval of 0 to 55, I, I put a, a bigger pattern where the distribution of the bits is equal to 100. Or uh, if I cannot uh, replace by such a big a matrix, I choose, for example, to replace a pixel value by a larger pattern, let's say 2 by 2 pattern or 4 by 4 pattern and so on, such that the number of printed dots approximate the varying size disks of the ink used in analog halftone printing. What is a halftone printing? A halftone printing is an analog process that uses a smaller or larger filled circles of black ink to represent shading for newspaper printing. So before we had this digital printing, we had something called analog printing and the ink dots varies in size, varied in size according to the uh, intensity we wanted to fill. For example, let's for example say we will replace each pixel by a value uh, matrix of 2 by 2 size so okay so this matrix for each given value we will put either zero dots either one dot inside uh, among these four either two either three either the all four dots are um, inked so how many values can I have using a 2 by 2 matrix I can have five values 2 to, 2 to the power 2 plus 1. So we can first remap the image values into this interval. So we have the image values varying between 0 and 255 and now we want them to vary between 0 and 4. And uh, by integer division we divide by 255 uh, over 4. So we make the correspondence if the value is x in the interval 255, 0 to 55, what would it be in the interval 0, 4? If the pixel value is 0, we print nothing. 
after the correspondence. If the pixel value is 4, for example, we print all the four dots. So the rule is to replace each pixel by an n times n matrix of dots. If the intensity is bigger than the desired matrix entry, then uh, print a, a dot on that entry location. Note that the image size may be much larger for a desert image. Replacing each pixel by a 4x4 four four array of dots. Is suppose you replace each value by a matrix, so of course the, the image size would be multiplied by the matrix dimension. So if, it, if you choose a 4x4 four four matrix, we will have a, an image that is 4x4 four four times larger, 16 times larger. So a clever trick is uh, the ordered dithering. The ordered dithering can get around this problem, the problem of having to, to dither and obtaining a bigger resolution image. Uh, suppose we want to use a larger 4x4 dither matrix. So this is a 4x4 dither matrix. Notice that we are not numbering here the places in order. We are explicitly numbering them in a cross manner, 0, cross 1, cross 3, 2, and then we have the, uh, uh, sorry, 0, cross 1, cross 2, 3, and then 4 again, 4, cross 5, cross 6, 7, and 8 again, and we are crossing, so we are scattering the places of the dots, so if we want to fill two dots in this 4 by 4 matrix, I fill the 0 and the 1, the places 0 and 1, which are scattered and uh, this is explicit and this is not only in the order dithering this, this was here present also in the normal dithering but what does the order dithering say the order dithering says that instead of replacing one value but by a 4x4 four four matrix or by a 2x2 two two matrix we just replace an order dither consists of turning on the printer output bit for a pixel what, how if the intensity level is bigger than the particular matrix element, just at that position and not at all the positions. So you go, you put this matrix above the image matrix and you see the pixel you are studying right now. Uh, for example, the pixel value is, is 10. Is 10 and suppose its place is here above the 14 so is 10 greater than 14 the answer is no so I don't turn off this pixel and finish we don't uh, we don't uh, uh, we use this matrix only for the value that corresponds to 10 why I chose 10 we will move the dithering matrix around the um, um, around the image as the example that will follow I will show you here so I show I made a, an explicit example, especially for you to understand. So this is Lena. I opened Lena BMP, and I took Lena I. I took Lena I. It is a sub image of Lena, because Lena has the face, the hair, the hat, everything. I took the sub image, a small image, going from 250 to 281 lines, and from line from column 250 also to 281 so I have now the Lena I matrix inside the Lena I matrix I uh, then transform the interval scale as I, I told you I have here a matrix of 4 by 4 so I have how many possible values I have 17 possible values from 0 to 16 so I transform the, the scale, I divide by, uh, I multiply by 16, I divide by 255, and this is the Lena I, this is Lena's I, you can see it is an 8-bit image, so the values here vary from 0 to 255, but this is the I, so you can see here an overshape inside of values that are less than 100, and um, in, uh, in the borders you can see uh, other values okay so here what what shall I do first I transform the interval of values so I have now values varying between 0 and 16 instead of varying between 0 and 255 
what I do next, I bring my dithering matrix and I superpose it over the image, okay? And I see here is 11. So I see is 11 greater than zero? Yes, it is greater than zero. So I put the value bit on. Is 12 greater than eight? Yes, on. 12 greater than two, on, etc. And uh, that's how I get all this uh, values on except for 15 because 12 is not greater than 15 and for 14 and for 13. And this 12 is considered a dark pixel uh, if we suppose that the darker is 16. And a bright pixel is, is suppose that the, uh, the brighter is 16. So uh, dark is sup uh, 12 is supposed near 16 so we must turn on all the pixels almost and then what do I do in the order dithering instead of sliding this uh, window I will move this window so I mo will move until the next 4x4 four four area and the same thing I repeat I compare the values uh, one by the corresponding place one with the corresponding place and I do this next time for this uh, sub matrix and the other until I finish the line and then I uh, go to the next uh, rows to the next four rows and I do the same thing with this technique I do not have to um, to make the image bigger the image resolution will stay the same because every value will be replaced by the by by one value one value will be replaced by one value so let's go back to the code and see what the code da, does so this is the dithering algorithm an algorithm for the order dither we will see together we will write together in matlab and execute with n times n dither matrix so you give me an n times n giver matrix and you give me an image and you ask, you tell me, I want to dither this image. So the algorithm is as follow. For x going to 0 to the maximum of x, from y to 0 to the number of column maximum, i is uh, x modulo n, and y is, uh, and j is uh, y modulo n, and i of x, uh, y is the input. And we want to know now the dithering output. O of x, y is the output, and D is the dither matrix that you gave me. It is n times n, so that's why I do modulo n to, to, to know for each value in which position it will be uh, corresponding to which of the dithering matrix values. Okay, I do modulo n, and I say. If i of x, y is bigger than d of, uh, strictly bigger than d of i, j, then turn this pixel on, else turn it off. And this is how I do. This is the order to the rings. So let us finish this section with a small demo. Lena is equal to in read the image Lena BMP. And we can see that the variable main lena is a matrix of type unsigned int 8. Unsigned int 8, it means that we have 8 bits all to represent positive integers. So from 0 to 255. And then we will see This is Lena. We showed it. It is 512 times 512, so it's small resolution. And then we will try to dither it. Dither Lena equal dither. I will write. Dither Lena equal the function to define in MATLAB dither of lena and then 
you can notice bigger lena is a logical uh, image that is of the same dimension as lena and then you can see it Apple and Sagan sugar and him show bigger lena Desert underscore Lena and here we go. This is our grayscale image and this is our digital image a desert image and we zoom in and we zoom in here to see the difference between a grayscale and uh, Desert image. So, uh, color images, color image data types. The most common data types for graphics and image files formats are 24 bit color and 8 bit color. Some formats are restricted to particular hardware operating system platforms, while others are called closed platform formats. Even if some formats are not cross-platform, there are conversion applications that will recognize and translate formats from one system to another. So either if a file format is special for Microsoft um, um, or for a certain operating system like Linux um, or for certain company as a property for a certain corporate, you can have um, applications that do the conversion. Most image formats incorporate some variation of a compression technique due to the large storage size of image files. And compression techniques can be classified into either lossless or lossy. When the compression, uh, when the compressed uh, data is can be re-decompressed and to be identical as the original, this is lossless. And the other uh, is lossy. 24-bit uh, color images, each in this type of image, instead of 1-bit color ima one bit, uh, image or 8-bit uh, grayscale image, we now are studying 24-bit color images. In this type of images, each pixel is represented by 3 bytes. Not only 1 bit, not only 8 bits, 1 byte. It is represented by three bytes and usually they are the RGB color channel. So, and how many possible colors can we represent? 16 million. And this is by a storage penalty where a 640 times 480 image uh, will occupy three times more um, of storage. An important point here that many 24-bit color images are actually stored on 32 and not only 24-bit color image because there is one extra byte for uh, the alpha value that is used for special effect on formation like transparency. So here we can see the forest fire image. So here we can see the figure 3.5 which shows a 24-bit high-resolution color image called Forest Fire BMP. And this is in the A part of the figure. In the B part in the, of the figure, we can see the separate R color channel and C is for the green color and D, we can see the uh, blue color channel. I will repeat the same thing on MATLAB for you, but for another uh, image, let's say for also Lena, Lena 24 bit equal M read Lena JPEG. I will open this image and then I will show you This is Lena, and then we will see each separate color channel apart. So, him show Lena 24 bit for the first channel, 
this is the red and I will show you the same thing but for the second plane green and finally the blue so MATLAB indexes begin at 1 and not at 0 and you can see that the areas in the figure where there is uh, red are uh, in the red matrix in the red channel matrix they are very light because this is a uh, high value and same thing for the green and the blue but again i repeat the process for a color for image it's called clown.jpg and again it is a 24 bit color image and i show each of the channel apart so this is the red channel this is the green channel and this is the blue channel and notice here when you have in the clown um, t-shirt the red uh, the red color it is a bright color it is a light color on the red channel the blue is light also in the blue channel and the green the same thing in the green channel so that's how you see it every pixel is uh, represented using three using three bytes this is our uh, image 24 bit that we are dealing with and it is 366 times 277 times 3 3 unsigned 8 and 8 and not 1 unsigned and 8 so 1 for 1 byte for red 1 byte for green and 1 byte for bit color images uh, are used instead of 24 bit color images in, in special cases so Systems can make use of 8-bit color image information, so-called 256 colors, in producing a screen image because it is sufficient for a screen. Such an image file uses the concept of a lookup table to store the color information. So inside the matrix of the image, we do not store the color. What we store is an index into a table with three byte values that specify the color. How we do that, I will explain before. I will. I want you to notice the histogram of the RGB colors in forest fire. So this is the color cube, and this is a distribution of the colors in of the forest fire. So the red values here means there are lots of colors of this. Uh, lots of pixels having this color, not this red color. The red indicates the, a high value, and the blue indicates a small value. But look most of the cube is there are no colors in the forest fire image uh, of most of the available colors so uh, among the 16 million colors the forest fire image does not use unless uh, only these uh, specific um, values so this is an example of the forest fire but in 8-bit color i will go back to the forest fire to, for you to see it in a true color uh, and here is it in the 8-bit color you can see that we instead of using 24-bit we used an 8-bit to represent each pixel and we still can use we still can see a meaningful image so what is the idea about uh, look uh, up tables the color look up tables what is the main idea the idea is in 8-bit images, this is the image you have and this is a specific pixel inside the image and here you don't code the real color because the real color as you can see it needs 24 bits and you are only having 8 bits to do something so you put the entry of the color in this table and the entry for example in here is 25 so you go in order to know which color you should display for this pixel you go to the lookup table and you go to the entry 25 and you read the color value so all what you do later in order to display the color for the pixel is to replace the 25 entry 
by the value by the value inside the lookup table okay so we, we now have the matrix is using the uh, 8 bit for one pixel and we have only a lookup table of uh, 22 uh, 56 entries from uh, from entry 0 to entry 255 and uh, each entry occupies uh, 3 bytes it means 24 bits and this is nothing to 25 times uh, 3 bytes in comparison with the image size because the image size is way more than 226 uh, entries okay so here is the gain in storage you you make a dictionary and you make uh, you store inside the image the entry in the, inside this dictionary and not the real value the real value is inside the dictionary so we call this dictionary a lookup table what is a color picker we will explain more about the lookup table but i will uh, explain to you what is a color a color picker a color picker is an array of fairly large blocks of colors and you do a my mouse click to select color I will show you directly now what is a color so this is an example of Google color picker you just uh, pick a color and then you can pick the intensity and the luminous of this color and then you get the triplet RGB value as well as another uh, color system uh, values okay so this is a color picker you can choose whatever value whatever color you like and you can pick your color back to our presentation figure uh, 3.9 displays a concept of this color picker and we go to figure 3.9 and here it is you have blocks of same entries for or in order for the human being to be, be able to see the color and then for each entry you have the color that you should be if you keep the index 25 but change the value of 25 what will happen you will see the same image but in different colors this is a very simple animation process that you can do you can uh, usually see in the magazines and the digital magazines so uh, you see for example a car and you want to see whether you want to choose a red car or a blue car and you click one button and it will become blue so that you can visualize it and it uses this technique dithering also exists for color images it can also be carried out uh, for color printers we have one bit per color channel and you can space out color with RGB and dot. If printer or screen can print only a limited number of colors using 8 bit instead of 24 bits is also doable. So uh, you can the color can become printable even if it is not in the lookup table. The apparent color resolution is increased by averaging intensities of neighborhood pixels. This is a trick to the eye and it tricks it into perceiving colors that are not available because it carries out a special blending that can be put to good use. Here is an example of uh, Lena and uh, B. You have the same reduced uh, Lena image but instead of using 24 bit colors, it is using only 5 bits. And this is done via also dithering. You can see this is done via dithering and see part of the image is the detail of the left eye of Lena, as you can see. Now the question is how to devise a color lookup table. So the problem is the color reduction. How to make an 8-bit lookup table for a 24-bit uh, color image or in more general how to make an n-bit lookup table uh, for a, a, a m-bit color image okay so uh, you have to reduce the range of colors but you don't want to lose the visual pleasure so uh, we so we are going to um, 
show you two ways one is straightforward and of course is not optimal and the second is uh, way better and is very famous the first straightforward look creation look creation you can think of you say you ha i have my my color cube so i will cut it into equal parts and for each color inside the image i will just and simply use the the closest neighbor in the sub cube so i i you can elect representatives for the color so for every region you will you will have all all the colors from this region you will have this representative so this is a very uh, uh, straightforward way so i will read the slide divide the rgb cube into equal slices in each dimension and the centers of each cube will be an entry in the lot so you, you have to divide your cube in order to have q uh, 256 cubes and then for each cube it it has an entry and the center of this cube will represent it in the lot in the lot so scale each range rgb how do how do we, are we going to do we have only eight bits so we scale each range rgb uh, from two to 255 initially into the appropriate range and then we generate a total all in all 8 bit code how do we do we cannot give our 3 by bits g3 bits and b3 bits we will be going to give b2 bits only and the the cause is that human beings are most sensitive to r and g2 are most sensitive to green and red and they can barely notice changes in uh, bring R and G range into 3-bit range so instead uh, you have to apply the rule of 3 to to transform the interval from 0 to 55 to 0 7 or very simply you just keep the most significant 3 bits and this is a division and uh, also for B, for the bytes representing the B channel, you just keep the two most significant bits and you get 6 plus 2, 8 bits and this is the final color representation. And whenever you want to know what the, what color is that, you, you take the first three bits of the, the most significant three bits of the color and you add to it five zeros to represent a byte to represent red channel. And the second three, the next three, you add to it five zeros also to be one byte and it will be the green channel. And the last least significant two bits are uh, kept for blue and you take them and those are uh, the color uh, blue and you complete the byte with uh, the six zeros. It is truncated like that. So finally each pixel gets replaced by its eight bit index and the color loot serves to generate 24 bit color and this is a way a second way is the median cut algorithm and it is better yet simple solution you say why do shall i represent uh, sh why shall i uh, elect representatives for colors that are not used so no i will i will create a lookup table that is specific to serve this image and not any other content I will create a good representatives that have relations with the with the uh, neighborhood. So you concentrate bits where they most need to differentiate between high populations of close colors. How how do I do this? I will explain this in a detailed example. You sort the R byte values and find their median, and uh, you sort them and find their median. So the median cuts the values in half. Uh, half of the population is above the median and half the population is below the median. So you can label ha uh, the one half as zero and the other half as one. And for each cutted population, you repeat the process. You sort them by one axis and you cut them in median. And uh, in seconds, we will see a detailed example. In this worksheet, we will be covering the median cut algorithm for the 8-bit color image with lookup table. And we, I will read the, the algorithm and the solution will be in a separate video. But I will explain the concept now.
The premise behind median cut algorithms is to have every entry in the color map represent the same number of pixels in the original image. So in contrast to uniform subdivision straightforward algorithm, these algorithms divide the color space based on the distribution of the original colors. So you take the original colors of the image and you see where are they, they are more and then you divide into cubes. The cube dimensions must not be the same, but they, the population inside the cube, we try to make the uh, equ equilibrated. So, uh, the process is as follows. First, you find the smallest box, which contain all the colors in the image. Outside the smallest box that contain all the colors, we don't care, because there are no colors, and we don't want to represent no colors. Sort the enclosed colors along the longest axis of the box. So we say we see this box, which side is longest, the red side, the blue side, or the green side. And then you split the box into, um, and then you, you, sh you see which side is the longest of the box, and then you sort the values in, the, in, the, uh, in this side. And then you take the median, you split the box into two regions at the median of the sorted list, okay? So now you have, you choose the axis, it's not arbitrary, you choose the longest axis of the box and you split the, uh, the box into two uh, uh, box where uh, along the median. So uh, those two boxes contain approximately the same number of population. And you repeat the above process. So maybe the next time you sort, uh, you again, you split uh, with the same axis. So maybe you split red, red next time. So you repeat the above process for step two until the original color space has been divided into 256 region. When you divide into two, you have now two boxes. When you divide the box into two, you have now one box from the previous time. And this box became two boxes, so you have in total three. And you continue until you have 256 boxes. I will take a small example that is not representative really, but inside the document, you not only have the execution by hand of a small example, you also have the code in MATLAB. So, so you can read the function in MATLAB, and I will explain it, as I said, in a separate video later. But let us consider a part of a LENA image, which is this one, you know, this is the red, a green, and blue, and we take only 4 by 4 small matrix of this image, okay? We take a sub-image, which is 4 by 4 pixels. And then we consider, uh, so this is the image, and we take the R values, 160, uh, 116, 1, um, 111, 13, 96, 18, and we copy them here, okay, and now same thing, we, we transform this two-dimensional matrix into a vector, one-dimensional vector, and the same thing for the blue channel, and then we see which one is the longest axis. How do we see which one is the longest axis? First, we have to sort the values, or at least know which one is the maximum uh, minus the minimum is the biggest. Okay, for the maximum in R is here 1, 16. I don't see another bigger number. And the minimum in this vector is um 96 96 i think okay we'll have 96 so 116 minus 96 for the green axis uh, we have values 15 as a minimum i think and the biggest value is the biggest value must be 24 26, sorry, we have 26. So 26 minus 15 equal 9. And for the b-axis, we have the biggest, the maximum of this vector is, the maximum of this vector is 67, and the minimum being 
and the minimum being 55. So 67 minus 55 equal 12, 26 minus 15 equal 9, and 116 minus uh, 90, uh, 96 is equal to 20. So which is the longest axis along this uh, cube? The longest axis along this cube is R. So I take R and I take the median of R. How do I take the median of R? First, I have to sort this vector R and then I take the value in the middle of the sorting, which is 104. So my first division of the cube RGB is at the median 104 for red. Then I consider the values that are less than 104 apart and then that are greater than uh, 104 again in another iteration. So what do I do here? I, I do it in another iteration. Go back to the first iteration, iteration number one. What do I do? The one that are less than 104, I put them and the others, the other corresponding pixels, for, for example, pixel 116, it's bigger than 104, I don't represent it. I make it absent here and in the corresponding channels. And then I take again this cube and I put the values and I see which is the longest axis. I get that the same thing, minimum minus, uh, maximum minus minimum. I get the blue, the longest axis, and the median is 61 here. And I take, I cut the cube at this median, the smallest, the smaller than this cube what will be uh, in a cube and the bigger values will be in another cube. Along with this uh, smaller than 61 in the channel blue, I have now only uh, two pixels, I have remaining two pixels, so I cut this cube into two and I repeat the process and I will explain the, um, the algorithm. I already explained the algorithm. I can show you the function in a separate video and we can run it in MATLAB. Finish our section. Next section is popular file formats and in which we will be discussing the GIF file format and other file formats.